from Symphony ESM, a Fujitsu company. And uh, present uh, one of our esteemed partners uh, and Juha Barihel from ServiceFlow to uh, host this webinar uh, around the service desk and CM concepts. And uh, a few background information for everybody. So uh, uh, Symphony Fujitsu Company is a long-standing partner of ServiceFlow. And we've had the privilege of working together with ServiceFlow for very many years uh, with successful implementations. And I'm very proud to present now Juha uh, in order to provide the content for this webinar. Juha, please go ahead. Thank you, Hannes. And, uh very warm, warm welcome on my behalf and good morning, good afternoon on my behalf as well. Um, so today the topic is service desk or service desks meet Siam and a um, little bit of my background. I have a background in IT service management almost 20 years now, uh, helping, helping companies and user organizations, MSPs, around the holy trinity of people, process, tools, and integrations. Currently, I'm a CEO and a co-founder at ServiceFlow. And the agenda today is about the management of multi-sourced IT environments, uh, the best practices or our experience with Symfony and uh, other clients and partners around, around service integration and management. Uh, what are the things that you need, could consider or should consider when you are planning such approach, either you, if you are a service provider or an end user organization? Then I will explain our, so, a little bit about our solution in that, and at the end of the presentation, we will have a, cover a customer case about this, this area. And if you have time, please. Send, send out questions through the uh, go to web go to webinar uh, tool and we will we will cover them at the end of the presentation just shortly about service flow we are a software company the solution is a true cloud solution which means that it's born in cloud we didn't migrate anything from the uh, current current technologies and and claim that it's it's a cloud based so it's a truly cloud based solution and we are on an integration business. There is nothing special about that. There are like 13, 13 companies in addition doesn't providing cloud based integrations. So how we are different is that um, our background plus 15 years the whole team in IT service management around the integrating different tools different processes. And uh, based on that, we have created a, a ready-to-use software as a service SaaS solution for this, this uh, service integration matter. So our, our role is more or less like a service integration enabler. As a, and um, that means that in cooperation in Symfony, in the Nordics and Benelux, around, around the, the kind of, for instance, service now client base, we, we enable these service integrations and Symfony's role is to help help the end user clients and MSPs to implement implement the uh, solution. So what does multi-sourcing mean? This is this is very high level picture of it. There is a end user organization, the company who have or organization who have outsourced their IT services. They might have a multiple suppliers and suppliers have subcontractors and this is how it typically looks like um, if you take the kind of the process integration and service integration approach this is kind of very high level draw the lines point to point very easy and nice uh, on, on, on this PowerPoint level at least the one thing that is really common in especially in service integration and money management approach is that there is a demand for the MSP or supplier to supplier integration. That 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 makes thing, things complicated on on all the levels from people, process, and tools, and the integrations as well. And we will cover that a little bit later. So service integration management uh, been around on the marketplace. I think two three years now. A lot of lot of hype around it. A lot of different uh, kind of. Uh, Approach depending who is who is talking, but this is I think this this quote quite nicely puts that in 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 a box. 
So the main goal of Siam is to coordinate internal and external suppliers and their services in a cost-effective way to achieve end-to-end -end service levels needed to support the goals of the business functions. Yeah, amen to that. And that Siam is, of course, it's designed for for a setup when you have multiple multiple suppliers and. Uh, uh, the trend has been in the recent years that the companies are not anymore playing with one vendor only, but are looking for best of breed suppliers for providing maybe one service together. And that comes down to the end to end service levels and uh, supporting the goals of the business functions. This all would be very easy and nice if, we, if, if your environment would look like this one track to, to one direction and another. Uh, backwards. If that would be the case, and if you think about the, the environment that you are operating, then you will be able to have quite manual ways of working. A little bit of like old fashioned, fashion. having the people, people controlling stuff, no really need to any automation or digitalization. That, that would work. But since your life in multi multi source environments or multi multi customer environments it's more like this it's a it's a kind of fast speed um, ever changing environment suppliers coming going processes changing and if you would be responsible of running this kind of environment how would you sleep your night if it's only manual if it's if you are depending on people running it and if you if we take this traffic example there's a reason why we have traffic lights. There's a reason why we have a, a common way of, of doing things. And uh, traffic lights, that's an automated system. There's a digitalization behind it. Otherwise, it would be impossible just to have the policeman or the standing in the corner of the street. That said, uh, in our experience and based on, on experience of our clients, what are the kind of characteristics of successful Siam setup. First one, which is the foundation of, of everything, is the data ownership. And that, that also from the tooling perspective means that you have to have the reliable data in your own tool, despite of the fact that you have outsourced your services. And when you have the data in your own tool, you will have the control and transparency and that, that actually applies both on the end user side or the service buyer side but also for the, for the MSP and supplier side. There must be the data in the tool that runs the processes in order to get the control and transparency um, for the services and this is really important when you are operating in multi-vendor environment. And the, the third bullet which is also really essential and that's the, one of the biggest changes in recent years that companies are looking for a freedom of choice. Um, all, the, all the parties in this kind of environment and uh, setup are trying to avoid different kind of lock-ins. It could be technological locking, but it could be also uh, contractual level lock-ins and uh, there has been a kind of a, it has been changed so that in many cases it could be, it used to be vendor locking, but in, now in many cases it could be also customer locking, so that the vendors and suppliers are forced into a situation which is not beneficial for either, either party. So um, there are certain things to, to consider and of course there is a, there's a solution and, and solution and promise on the marketplace, how, how to manage this. And that's, that's what Siam tries to, tries to cover. Here's an example from uh, TCS, Tata Consultancy Services, their uh, service integration framework. And it's, um, I, I would say that the most, of the most of the main players in the marketplace are having some kind of a framework around Siam. The good thing with this is that it's, it's kind of an out-of-the-box approach, so that the, your Siam provider has everything in place. It's a mature model, they have a competence, they have experience how to run it. Uh, at least on, on high level. And if you look at the picture, uh, on, on the top we have the business and retained IT organization. It's quite thin and it's lean. And then there's these arrows between service integrator. 
but also on the on the bottom of the of the picture we have service towers and in this case in this example we have eight different service towers and they are also connected with this small arrows here and that's actually where the service desk and service desks meet Siam that's the area where where the magic happens or not as in the, in the beginning I explained the objective of, of Siam and it, it it stated that it has to be there has to be end-to-end -end, uh, SLA management so these small arrows are really essential in that sense and they are about the integrations as well and service integration currently like like we already discussed that the data ownership and control is really important this is very common line in the in the outsourcing bits nowadays or have been quite many years already service provider is required to use customers IT service management tool or integrate to it and that's there's a reason for it like I explained customers don't want to lose control and when you when you think about that that line what does it mean when you you are then implementing such such approach and um, Kind of taking ramping up new services etc these are the things that you need to consider process level how do i integrate the processes what is actually the what is our process how does it look like how do i integrate it well there's a process then there's the data how do i integrate the data tooling whose tools i i use MSPs are thinking about that, but end users are also thinking about it. How, whose tools to use and how? How we are using them? How do I manage the changes in the tools? On the people side, and this is really important, how do we enable smooth cooperation between service providers, including internal IT? So that there are multiple providers, multiple service desks. How do we, how do we enable smooth cooperation between them? And how do we avoid end you interfering and uh, a kind of bothering our end users on both sides? These are the questions that are you have to ask when you when you start this kind of a journey. Since in IT we are quite technology oriented, which is good, but also these are the things that we see we have seen. This is actually a real life quote from one case that we were involved. Our processes are defined and we have our own IT service management tool in use. In addition, we have an integration platform or technology and our IT service management tool has an excellent modern standard interface. How hard can it be? And this is now applying to those small arrows in the picture that I saw, showed a couple of slides back. However, this is the reality in multi multi source environment unfortunately and the the reason is that as we all know ITIL is not a standard there is no standards that define how does the incident look like what is the what is the data model of incident management process standard web api is not an integration it's just a socket and people process tools they're always custom custom made so to speak even though you have two similar service now or BMC's side by side same version still the data model is different the processes are always uniquely defined based on the customer need and that's the way it should be there is no other way around it that's the way to do it you have to have the custom made data models you have to align the service management and support processes based on your business requirements that's the only only way to do it However, in many cases, the symptoms, so to speak, are in, especially in multi-source environments, that people, we have unsatisfied service desk staff due to the lack of real-time information and control. So it means in practice that the service desk people don't have a visibility when they escalate tickets, when they relate the tickets between different, different service desk management systems and service towers. And that also, as an end result, causes the end users, the business, are often interfered with ITSM-related matters, 
which is totally nonsense and should not happen, but also they don't have visibility to services, at least real-time visibility. And that also, it's a, it's a kind of a circle that goes around and causes unsatisfaction, uh, unsatisfied users, unsatisfied staff. Process, um, when you have this kind of a traditional approach for this, process development is really complicated. Changes are, are slow and expensive. And that's due to the fact that you have multiple parties in, in the picture that you have to take in consideration. But even worse is that parties who are dealing with this multi-sourced multi, multi um, environments, they need to adapt somebody else's way of working. And they are not able to run their processes based on the business need. And that's just a, um, it kind of takes away the, the benefit of, of multi-sourced environments if you are not able to really adapt to your, business, your own business needs. And that, again, applies on both sides, on the supplier side and the, the end user side, or the service buyer side. Then the tooling. Uh, there are different ways to approach this. If, if you have a tool that you have invited all the, all the suppliers to working, it easily, it's, it might sound in a short term, very easy approach. Let's just you know, set up the um, user accounts to my 15 different suppliers, ask them and invite them to work over there. In a, in a long term, it will create a locking, or at least could create a locking element for you. And locking means in this case, that it's, it gets really expensive and slow to change the tool based on the processes that you want to develop. Because you have to take in consideration all the different out, uh, external parties in that tool. And that's of course not the goal. And especially in ServiceNow environments, the tool is great, it's really flexible, it's really easy to change. And if, if you have such a locking, locking setup, it will take a benefit out of the actual the good technology that you have acquired. And end of the day, hardly any automation. A lot of tasks, manual tasks, a lot of phone calls, a lot of uh, kind of uh, difficulties in, in finding a right place to getting the service and stuff like that, which is quite, I'm sure you are aware of that kind of uh, complaints coming from the end users. Five different portals that I need to record my incidents. Not the way I want to get my IT services from. Um, and when it comes to the integrations, one thing is, is, is for sure. Integration projects are not easy. They are, they are pretty, pretty difficult ones. I'm not, there is no way of any technology would help you to get around the fact that you have to have the kind of a clear vision what you are doing. But when you are operating in, in multi-vendor environments, the production is even harder. There are a lot of, lot of parties, a lot of different companies, a lot of, lot of lot, different businesses and they are, they are driving for changes. They, there are changes that are continuously coming in. So you need to really consider how you manage this kind of, it's, it's short term uh, kind of wins, quick wins could cause a lot of trouble in, in, in long term. So this is the background um, and things that you might want to consider when you, when you are operating in multi-sourced environment. And of course, as a solution provider, we have a solution for it, surprisingly. So just a couple of slides and the, the, the idea behind service flow, why do we exist, why we are the world's first software as a service solution for service integration, why we are also Gartner, cool vendor, and in ITSM 2.0 list. So because of all that that I just explained, we wanted to create a solution where uh, all the parties are able to keep their own tool and data. That's the first thing to do. And the data must be reliable as well. So what we have created is that and provided is the ready to use, easy to manage, uh, fast to implement uh, SaaS solution for service integration where we already have the suppliers and vendors connected. So it's more like a enabling service management ecosystem. And here are a couple of couple of our users, different verticals, also MSPs now already using our solution. Um, the reason why these logos are here is that 
typical end user client of ours, why they have chosen to use our solution is that they have their own retained IT organization, they have multiple suppliers, and they have their own ITSM, IT service management tool and way of working in that tool. The reason why they chose ServiceFlow as a solution is that they wanted to have the control and transparency. What's going on? They wanted to have the flexibility to change the suppliers so that the technology is not locking. There, there could be other locking elements, but not that from the technology side. And also reliability of, of running multi-sourced environments. So this is, this is how the, the solution looks like from the end user point of view. This is the business, end users and customers. They are, they are making different requests to your, to your IT, towards your IT services. Then you are running IT service management processes, support processes, etc. Requests fulfillment, whatever process in some of these tools in your IT. Or it could be a sign provider in Bitbit. Anyhow, when you have outsourcing, you are not really producing services. You are responsible of those services, delivering the business support when it's needed, and uh, based on the definition that is hopefully have come come from business. On the right hand side, we have service providers and service vendors. They are producing the services, and in multi-sourced environments, it, it's quite common that uh, there are multiple providers providing one service for you. One is providing infrastructure, infrastructure. One is applica applications, and one end user support, etc. Support, etc. Et so what we have now done is that we have already connected these these logos. You can see actually it's not even the full list since we are continuously adding more uh, suppliers, and that means for you that you just need to connect your service management tool, maybe with help from Symfony for in this case, to our solution, and then. It's about how you want to work with these suppliers. So the connection technology is there. Connections are up and running. We support all the ITSM tools on the marketplace. Technology is kind of taken out of the picture, the complexity of, of building integrations. So service flow is not an integration platform. You are not able to develop anything on top of it because you don't have to, and you shouldn't, because the, as we saw in the previous slide, integration projects are really difficult. And we are taking that pain of pain out of out of the picture. And when you have the integrations up and running, we take care of the rest. Our role is to provide the reliability. We operate these connections on your behalf, 24/7 monitoring, 99.9 .9 availability, end to end. We have all the tools, the UI that you can do the um, mappings, translations, all that in in one place instead of in the distributed model where we have different business, uh, business logic built into the endpoints. Of course, it's a SaaS solution, so maintenance, support, development is included. So that's our role, to provide that end-to-end -end process and data integrations as defined in SIAM, SIAM model. That's, that's our role here. And Symfony's role is to help you guys to figure out how do you want to work with the suppliers. So, as a service flow as a solution, give you, gives you the opportunity to co um, kind of move from distributed integration model where we have different endpoints configured per supplier or per customer to one where you have centralized management of, of all the integrations. We have the adapters for the ITSM tools, no need to develop, develop anything to connect, and of course, since we, our focus is integrating services, we support all the ideal process, processes, including CMDB, but also MSP to MSP integrations. And that's, that's one of the benefits being uh, kind of, if you connect to this ecosystem, you have this opportunity to draw out use cases so that there are, there are this um, vendor to vendor interoperability. And of course, as a nature, nature of SaaS, it's all inclusive, flexible subscription based price, pricing, pricing model. Well, we are content, continuously adding new suppliers. So please, if, you have, if your supplier is not on the list, let us know. We will do the connection free of charge. That's because that's our role. 
Um, about the implementation, just just a brief example uh, that tries to explain why we are different. So on the le left hand side you have the the blue circle saying connect. That's the part that used to take 15 to 120 days to set up technical connections between so, uh, different tools going through the firewalls, etc. And that's now available as a ready-to-use solution. No need to figure out how to how to how to connect systems. And that means that you can immediately start figuring out the use cases. How do I want to work? How, what are the, how do we work together with the suppliers? And based on those use cases, you can do the configurations or use the help of Symfony to do the configurations, test them out, approve, and take them to the production. So typical, uh, typically we, we start, the clients, clients start with incident management or ser service requests. It takes maybe one to two weeks in calendar time, calendar time to set this up. So it's a fraction of time compared to the traditional approach. And um, living life with service flow, using it, these are the things that are quite common within our client base. Service desk has a real-time info all the time. They have a visibility of what's going on. End users are happy because they see what's going on. There is a real-time uh, maybe visibility on some, some, some kind of an end user portal about the incidents. The updates are coming from the throughout the supply chain, from the from the subcontractors through the MSP and to the end user client. And they are not interfered at all with ITSM related matters because of the isolated approach that we provide. If somebody is changing some, some of the tool, it doesn't really affect to the, to the uh, multi source environment that you are running. Because of, of isolated approach, you're using all, your own tool, you can also develop the processes as you wish. And you can easily change the processes. The, the technology is not the locking element here. And uh, the best thing is that these processes, this incident management, for instance, don't have to be equally defined. And in practice, it means that you can you can use your own language in your own tool. You can have your own service categories instead of instead of trying to add in different suppliers service categories so that you can rely the tickets. No, use your own language. Even even it's a Finnish, Swedish, or Norwegian language, you can use it because the mapping happens in service flow. And also, if you want to change something, it's just a, just a configuration. No development needed. And that also applies to the tools. You can change the tools. You can, you can apply those changes, those changes from the process to the tools um, without having to worry about the integration part. And uh, again, <laughs> the end users can, can keep on doing what they expect, we expect, expect them to do. And you can also, you can also change the tool. It doesn't break down the system. And uh, I would say that the end result, what we all should aim, this is business support services, so they should be fully automated. There shouldn't be any manual tasks. It, it should be lean, flexible, and uh, adaptive. And that's, that's one of the things, those are the things that we, we enable. So you can really automate the for workflows between different suppliers, service towers, and still stay in control what's going on. Basically, the principles of, of supply chain management can be adapted in this using using our solution. Like I said, no need to develop anything, you just subscribe to it and you can focus what, what you are kind of trying to do, which is the business support, uh, cost savings, uh, high availability of business business systems and applications and stuff like that. That was about service flow, and now we have a few more minutes about the, the customer case. OP, OP Financial Group is uh, actually they were chosen as a Europe's strongest bank. They are the largest bank in Finland, uh, 4.3 million customers, 20, around 12,000 people, uh, employees. And uh, um, a couple of years ago, they decided that they will really strive to the digitalization. Banking has been 
has been at least as you know in the in the northern Europe at least has been the, the kind of the uh, vertical business vertical that have been building these digitalized services for a long time and now OP, OP group decided that they will also strive that from the from the ICT services point of view so they they decided to update it and um, the first thing they did they decided outsource a lot of a lot of uh, of the services, but also a lot of people. Um, approximately 500 people joined new employers, and uh, they were looking for kind of streamlining the production of the services and make the product development process more flexible. These were the these are the things that they they start with, and they they were also acknowledging that they are over 100 years old, and. The thing that they were looking for a business support services side was the agility, visibility, and flexibility in delivering these IT services. So the project goals when they started, of course, they before this they they have the, all the all the outsourcing contracts in place, service management offices defined, etc. So the background work has been going on for maybe six six months prior prior to the actual go live. So in this this phase where uh, we and our, uh, our partner were joined, there was a goal of integrating incident and problem management processes between different different suppliers, and there was a goal that all tickets are then automatically relayed to the correct service vendor, and uh, also the vendor to vendor interoperability is possible. And in addition, they wanted to have full visibility and control what's going on in their own using their own ITSM, ITSM tool. Then we had a chat with them why the integrations were important. Surprisingly, the things that are actually characteristics of, of successful SIAM has uh, where the their kind of a factor driving driving factors to to look for these service integrations. Data ownership, control and transparency, freedom of choice. And this is how, how the landscape looked like when they started. There is their OP, OP's um, IT, IT retained IT organization and they chose CGI, Accenture and Tieto as their main suppliers to provide these kind of services that they were acquiring. Phase one. This is this is the setup, which meant that OP's system was connected to service flow. All the incident service requests came from there to service flow, and in service flow there are rules, mappings, translations, so that they will go uh, two-way two-way integration to the correct supplier. But also, if there is a if if there is a problem with it, it's a it's a wrong ticket somehow, user error may be involved. CGI can relay ticket to the Accenture and other way, other way around. And this is uh, just a high, high, highlight uh, the phase one project timeline. I don't go into the details. I just want to point out that the project was really interesting because all the vendors, all the three vendors were involved simultaneously. They were working as part of the project team. They were implementing the processes uh, together. They were kind of, a, it was of course, tried by OP's, OP's uh, project management and they had a really, Really important thing in these kind of uh, huge change, big changes is that they have the management commitment. The, the ID, ID board was uh, the appointment people to drive this, so that there was like a VP level involvement in the project. And from start to, to go live, it took um, approximately three months to implement, and most of the time was spent around how do we work together, the use cases, use case definitions, and then based on those. They were configured by using service flow, so that uh, and that they could be then tested together. So phase one was done. Three months. All all the all the parties were su surprised actually and satisfied. But then, of course, change is coming. Like I like I mentioned earlier, the production part is the hardest part in this kind of setup. And the phase two. This is the this is the setup in phase two that they were looking for. So, 
what what they decided that the first line should be somewhere else. The OB's own first line shouldn't handle the tickets anymore. So they chose Fujitsu to provide end user support services. Uh, it's not uh, all the end user support services as we speak, but that's the, that's the objective over there. And in practice, this means that uh, Fujitsu will now take the first line. They will they will categorize the tickets, and the tickets will then re be relayed to the correct supplier who is responsible of the service. But at the same time, OP Bank system has full visibility what's going on. They can measure the SLAs in their own tool because they have the data. And uh, the funny thing here is that in this like phase 2.0, OP Bank decided to go and change their tool. And it meant that they are now implementing ServiceNow as we speak as a tool over there. But still the production is running. The, the integration, as, as, because of the isolated approach, this, this setup will be, will be there. They just need to add the new tool and run current tool and, uh, and the new tool simultaneously so that the data is in both systems and it's really easy to retire the old, old system. For. And uh, phase 2.2, Accenture swapped their tool from BMC to ServiceNow. And yet again, the end users, the customer, uh, OP Bank is not interfered at all because of the tool change. If you compare to the traditional approach, point to point, there will be a lot of testing, a lot of involvement for all the parties, but thanks to service flow, that's not required. The quote from Marika Lindstrom, who she was uh, vice president back, back then in common IT ser ICT services, and I think this is the this is the key takeaway to you um, is that their starting point was that the outsourcing partners adapt to, to their operational operating model, not the other way around. So they have defined the way they work, and they invite their suppliers to adapt to that. But also, additionally, they were driving to control and transparency, as, as mentioned by quite many times already. But they they want to have the, the control in their own tool. That was about the, the case, and um, this is the kind of a. I try to make a list for you, to as as a takeaway. How does it look like, and what what things, what are the headlines to think about? It's your business. It should be your processes then and your tools, and that applies on both sides. That said. Uh, strongly recommend to define the way you work based on the requirements from your business. Focusing on how do you, the most, in the most efficient way, you support and deliver business support services. When you have that model in place, present that model. Don't go to the, these workshops with your incident management process. Present the model the way you operate and, if, and the use cases. And then you ask the suppliers to adapt to it. And the adaptation means, when, especially when you are using service, uh, a solution like service flow, is that you focus on the process touch points and the data that you need to exchange. You don't have to worry about tech, technologies level at all. It's, it's given. So you can really start from the, from the valuable part. How do I work? How do I want to work with my suppliers? What is the data that I, that I would need in order to run my, my processes efficiently? Uh, and of course, because our experience and, and the solution that we provide, I strongly recommend not to create any custom-made integration logic for each and every one. That will, that will really cause, cause you a lot of trouble when, you, when, there, when there are changes in place. Um, that's it from my side. If if you would like to see a demo or, or book a demo, you can you can connect uh, contact us from the website or directly our partner Symphony. They are more than happy to happy to provide you maybe a proof of concept or a demo if, if you like about the solution. So this this stage, I will I will thank you for your time and hope hope there there were some. 
valuable information for you to use in your daily work.